are back at it again for another brand new episode. And you know we have so many fabulous special guests on here. And today I could not be more thrilled. I have one of my friends with me. Her name is Shelly Martinez. She is a wrestler, a model. She absolutely kills it in the social media game. And we actually met back in California. So for those of you guys that don't know, I actually lived for about two years out in the Los Angeles area when I was highly involved with reality TV. I met Shelly because I used to work at AfterBuzz TV and through our friend Angelina, who also used to be a former pro wrestler. Um, I think so. I, Cause here's the thing, <laughs> like I remember it was like the Stone Cold uh, Steve Austin thing. Maybe if there was a guest or something from another reality show. I just remember like being introduced to this other reality show that had nothing to do with wrestling. So I don't remember because it's so long ago. Nonetheless, here we are. Shelly, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? I'm doing well. You know, I was nursing a hangover this morning. So, <laughs> so there was that, but it wasn't too bad. It wasn't like a crazy, like throwing up hangover. It was just those very drained. You know, it's been super hot here in California. And yesterday was Wine Wednesday and I had a crazy day. So I had me some wine and boy, did it kick my butt. So it was a slow start to my morning. But, you know, I was just so excited to come on here because, okay, yes, we're doing the podcast and everything like that. But this was my chance to like hang out with you virtually. And I was really excited about that. So yay. <laughs> Shelly and I have been trying to plan this for a, I want to say a few months now, but she has a very busy schedule. You guys all know that I am traveling all over the place with my boyfriend for baseball and doing a ton of editing. So I was just like, Shelly, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I have to like reschedule. Like, what are you doing? She's like, okay, I have to take my dog to the vet. And I'm like, I promise we're going to make this happen. So you look gorgeous, by the way. So for those of you guys that may be watching live or that may be listening to this in the podcast, she has a pretty blue top on. She is very tan. Again, she is out in California, born and raised out in that area. She has nice, long, pretty, I don't know if it's black hair or dark brown hair. And she has a really pretty matching flower on the side of her head, which I love because I'm all about the chill, beachy vibe. So Shelly. We are going to, before we even talk about the fact that you grew up in the California area, let's just break the ice for the Boss Babes fanatics. One of your superpowers, if you could have a superpower, you said you wish you could freeze and unfreeze time. So let's discuss that. Okay, so I'm an old fart. As Carrie Bradshaw says, a oh, hot old fart, but I'm an old fart. So back in my day, <laughs> there was this show called out of this world and it was like one of those saved by the bell-esque kind of um shows and the main character she was half alien half human and she could freeze and unfreeze time all the time and i was just so mesmerized by that because not to bring the party down but my whole life i have this whole phobia about death so for me when i would watch that show and i saw that her powers were that I thought it was so cool because you could like control time and you know, before someone dies before you, it's, it's this whole thing. <laughs> so that kind of just stuck with me after I saw that show back in the eighties, because I was like, man, and then I kind of took it to the next level and I'd be like, wow, like you could, if I really had this power, I would freeze time right now. And I would just like imagine all the stuff I would do. And that was like one of my pastimes. So, Kind of in a way, I've had this superpower. <laughs> and, um, you know, I thought it was really cool when you asked that question. I was like, man, I know what the answer is. That's freeze and unfreeze time. Super cool. Are you able to sort of talk a little bit about why you are afraid of dying? I know normally we don't talk about these types of topics, but I think it's so interesting. Did you have something happen in the past or do you have bad dreams about it? Do you know where that fear might stem from? Yeah, well... A big portion of my family on my mom's side, um, there was just a lot of like toxic environments there. And a lot of it had to do with like gangs and things like that. My relationship with death at such a young age was these like gnarly things that happen that just shouldn't happen. And it really messed me up. And 
I grew up in a Christian church and it was, I grew up pretty in a strict household as well. So fear was really pushed upon me. So the trauma from like all the craziness from my childhood because of my family and what they've been involved in, in combination with my mom's trying to protect me to not go that route. So she's like super, super strict, puts me into church and it's like fear, fear, fear. So the two together, it was just like overwhelming to me. So to this day, I deal with it like in such a crazy way. Um, a friend of mine passed away like a month ago. And again, those triggers came back. And a lot of the work that I've done on myself, like trying to let go of that fear, not let it take over and things like that. Uh, I took steps back and it's just like, oh my gosh, I'm always going to have to deal with this. But I think the best way is just like talking about it, like on my podcast and things like that. I do openly talk about it because I'm usually thinking about it. It's so sick. Like I'm usually like, if you would break down, like say I'm up for like 12 hours or whatever in that 12 hours, I would say on an average, I probably, if you calculated the minutes that I think about death, it's probably about 10 hours of that. So it's like bad. <laughs> wow. I'm glad that I asked you that question, even though it does sound a little bit touchy and it does sound like it might trigger some stuff. So we will obviously switch topics, but I was just kind of interested because you did men mention the whole freezing and unfreezing time and the fact that you were afraid of death. So I just didn't know if it, stemmed from maybe watching a movie as a child or maybe you got into a really bad accident when you were younger so that's kind of where that next question evolved from but i totally understand you dealing with some trauma as a child and it kind of just weaving into your adulthood and it sounds like now in a healthy way you are working on trying to in a healthy way i guess cope with some of that so i applaud you for being able to do that and i think that's awesome you do talk about that on your podcast Speaking of your podcast, shout it out right now. Where can people listen to your podcast? Where, and if people are listening, Shelly Martinez is a model and former WWE wrestler. So you guys are going to be hearing her talk all about how she got into the freaking sport, where she grew up, her workout routine, because she looks freaking amazing, sports, modeling, you name it. We're going to be discussing everything. But first and foremost, we are hearing her talk about some childhood trauma that she dealt with when she was younger and how she deals with it. So Shelly, where is your podcast? What is it called and how can people listen to it? Well, I have a few um, right now. If people just go to martinezgirlsradio.com, it'll redirect you to my Martinez Girls <laughs> Productions um, YouTube channel. And that's a podcast that I have with my sister. Her and I've been podcasting for years. Like I would say like over 10 years trial and error, different podcasts, whatever. So now we're bringing it to YouTube. Um, I also have a podcast. If you go to Shelly, SJSmokeout.com, me and my buddy Stoner Jesus, every single week we have, we record a show. It's really awesome. I talk about a lot of my stories on there. Both podcasts do that. Like I, I share about my, my stories in my life. I would say the difference is, is the one with my sister. She does have different segments on there. Like her name's Danielle a segment called Cafe Danielle. And she, her tagline is, you know, to stimulate your mind, body and rock and roll. So usually it's something mental health or music or whatever related. So that's really fun. Yeah. You know, I am just really passionate about my podcast. And again, I've been doing them for over 10 years on and off. And when I was a little girl, I used to listen to talk radio. And what I would do is I would record myself. And when the people on the talk radio would talk and then they have a little break in between what they're going to say, I would correspond with them. Like if I was on live radio with them, I was always the girl calling into love line. Like I just love broadcasting and it's something that wrestling, because wrestling is very demanding, and it just always kind of took my focus. So that's why it's been on and off for 10 years. I've been doing podcasts, but now I feel I'm in a time in my life where I can just really focus on it because I'm retired, been retired for a few years now. So now I feel it's the time to like get back to broadcasting Shelly in full effect. <laughs> I think that's super cute that as a kid, you would listen to these talk radio shows and kind of record yourself and just place your voice in. Like a lot of people don't really even know what they want to do when they're younger. And it sounds like you from a young age knew that you had that spark of, okay, 
I like entertainment. I like listening to this. I wonder how I can turn this into a career. And you clearly are doing it now. And since we are on the topic of childhood and growing up, I know you did grow up in, I don't know if I'm going to say this correctly. Is it Chino or Chino, California? Uh, Chino and Ontario, California. I say both because my grandma was from Chino and that's like where I was at a lot. But my mom, our house was in Ontario. So it was like two, again, my mom was trying to save me from this gang world <laughs> that my family had. So it was really interesting. So that's why I always have to shout out both. It's, I have to always shout out Chino and Ontario, California. So thank you for clearing that up. Do you have any siblings? Are there any favorite home cooked meals that you enjoyed eating when you were a child? What was your home life like? I know you kind of mentioned a little bit about the gangs that you were around, but that your family tried to keep you away from. Discuss that for the Boss Babes fanatics. All right. Well, I do have a sister, Danielle. Her and I are super close. I am nine years older than her. Um, but I always tell people we are twins. But because she's four foot 11, I'm five foot five. So I have longer legs. So when we were inside my dad, I was just a faster swimmer. So I came out nine years early, <laughs> but we're totally twinsies. We, had, we just had each other in this like crazy world that we lived in. There was a lot of good. I'm not saying that there wasn't, but you know, it was just, it's just really crazy when it's almost like I lived this dual life because I was super close with my grandma. I grew up always going to her house, but like the older I got, it seemed like the more my mom was trying to keep me away from there. And it's not that I'm interested in the gang life or anything. She just wanted to like keep me safe. It's crazy because I normal to me was being in the hood in Chino, California and feeling totally comfortable. Like it was like nothing to me. But then when I go to Ontario, which was only 10 minutes away, uh, we lived in this like kind of community. And so it was completely different. And it was so interesting because I saw these two different worlds, even though they were just 10 minutes from each other. But the reality was, you know, my mom was a single parent. My dad um, took off after she was pregnant with my sister. So we had it rough. So it like we had it good in this like cute house in this like community. But a lot of times like our lights would get turned off, the gas would get turned off. It was rough. You know, and it's so crazy because like when I was living at those moments, it was never like, oh, why do we have to be like this? It was more like, OK, this is what's happening. Like, let's let's just make the best of it kind of thing. And I'm really grateful for being exposed to both of those worlds growing up because it really helped me like in life and especially with my career and like it's just really crazy. So it's like I'm very grateful for those toxic experiences. And then I'm also grateful that, you know, one of the things that my family would pull together to do is we'd go to Yosemite a lot, which is the Sierra Nevadas here in California. So beautiful. And, you know, I do have those memories too, where like my family was really trying, they wanted it better and like trying to make it work. And, you know, I used to be really jealous sometimes of people who it seemed like their home life was very, you know, not perfect, but a little bit more put together. Parents were present, but man, like I wouldn't change a thing because all of that stuff, like my sister and I, we just attack our problems and issues differently. And I really do believe it's because we had that dual life. It is just so crazy. But um, going back to food, my grandma, oh my gosh, first of all, I, I'm a pescatarian, so there's that for years I've been. But growing up, I wasn't. And man, there was nothing like when my grandma would make this soup. It's called a bonega soup, which is pretty much like a Mexican meatball soup. Her meatballs were so big and homemade. And I would get in trouble a lot because when the soup would be cooking, I would go by and get a fork and just get a meatball. But I would do it like three, four or five times. So like that's a lot of meatballs to be missing, especially when they're like that big. You know, I really love that. Uh, also, you know, there's nothing like, you know, when you're from California, I don't know if some of you are aware of this, but there's this place called In-N-Out and it is so good. It's a simple burger place. There's nothing like In-N-Out. And when I think about growing up, 
I just think about how it was always a special thing if we went to in and out and then, oh, and after church, we always went to Carl's Jr. And who was still a Carl's Jr. girl? This girl right here. <laughs> so shout out to Carl's Jr. being there for me my entire life. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I think that is so awesome that you enjoyed going to in and out while I was out in the West Coast. That was one of my favorite places to go to as well for like a little cheat meal. For those of you guys that don't know what in and out is, you are ever out in the West Coast like Shelly is talking about. You need to go there. Get yourself a burger. Get some fries because you will freaking like it. To me, it kind of tastes a little bit like Shake Shack. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Shake Shack before, but if you are a burger person, you have to go to in and out at least once. And the fact that your grandmother made that fantastic Mexican meatball soup. I'm over here like, Shelly, you need to send me some of this so I can try it. That sounds freaking fabulous. Did you put like little tortillas on top of it? Like, was it spicy? Greatness. It was more like, okay, so you had the big old meatballs that were from, you know, from scratch. And then um, she would have like, a bunch of different vegetables in there and then she'd put potatoes in there but she kind of cut them like really thick so after they've been in that soup for so long marinating and they're so soft when you take that bite it's like all the juice is in it oh god it's so good chicken in there as well so it was just freaking the bomb like it's just it was really good um, I've yet to have a vegetarian one. I want to make some, so I haven't done it yet, but you know what? Now that I'm talking about it, this is my push that I need to make this abundant soup vegetarian style. For those of you guys that are listening to the Boss Babes Lifestyle Sports Podcast, I'm your host, Brittany Baldi. Thank you for listening to episode after episode. I truly appreciate it. You guys are now listening to Shelly Martinez. She is a friend of mine, a model and wrestler. She currently has her own podcast. So if you guys want to check out her podcast, I'm sure you can head to her Twitter page and you can find all of her content there. And we are now talking about the fact that she grew up in California. She was very close to her family. She enjoyed her home cooked meals, loved Kyle's Jr. As a child, she loved her in and out Burger because again, she grew up on the West Coast and she is also talking about some of the hardships that she dealt with as a kid. So I think it's awesome that she is opening up on this podcast, talking all about both the good, and some of the traumatic things that happened that actually helped shape who she is as an adult now. She is talking about if she did not go through some of those situations, she might not be where she's at currently in the present. And I love talking about these things on podcasts because it's almost a way to kind of self-heal and get things out into the open because somebody that's listening to this podcast episode for all we know might be going through the same type of situation and they might be able to use Shelly as a push point like wow like Shelly went through all these situations when she was younger and she was able to come out on top and be so successful so again I thank you so much for coming on this podcast today let's talk about your freaking workout routine we've already discussed a little bit about your childhood and some of your memories you are in tip top shape girl and when you were younger you were probably like rock solid or maybe you weren't i don't know but it seems like you might have been forever you probably popped out of your freaking mom with muscles and abs so what are some <laughs> of your what are some of your top fitness tips and how do you stay so physically fit is it more about the dieting the meal plans or is it more about actually being physically active is it a combination Let's discuss how you stay so physically fit. When I was in kindergarten up until high school, I was in track. So that for me, I feel really helped me, uh, first of all, deal with everything like I had mentioned before, because I kind of was able to escape through running. And um, I think I, I love that that's what I got into because I'm the type of person to this day, like I will go on long walks. Like I'm talking about, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people wouldn't know this distance, but there's a place called Marina Del Rey here in California. Uh, really beautiful. And there was a day when I was in Marina Del Rey. And at that time I was living in Hollywood. So give or take traffic, that's about 40 minutes or so. 
Well, one day I just like Forrest Gump felt like walking and I walked home and it was amazing. So that's the kind of walker I am. <laughs> and I think a lot of it has to do with that track and like being in track. Yeah, cardio sucks. I'm not saying it's my favorite thing in the world, but something that I've discovered when I've tried to get some help with my fitness and stuff is a lot of people like, oh, you want to kill yourself on the treadmill. And I I think to myself, I'm fine with it, though. I don't like it, but I'm fine with it. And I think, again, that goes back to being in track for so long. When I became involved in wrestling, that's when I really started to learn how to work out because a lot of my friends were wrestlers. At one point, I lived with a bunch of wrestlers and we became like almost like a little team and I needed that. And that's how I learned how to use the machines properly and, you know, do everything properly. You know, I think it helped me having that athletic background because it's it just was second nature to me. But then it's like later in life, especially after I um, stopped wrestling, that's when I saw that I needed to reprogram myself because I wasn't burning as much as I was before because I was the type of person that people would be like, I don't know about Shelly because she drinks wine, she eats pasta all the time, and she's like super lean. Like, what is that? And it's like, well, I do my workout. You know, I, I always believed in mixing in weights with cardio for me. That's just always been my thing. But when you throw in wrestling and you go to wrestling training a couple days a week for hours at a time, you're burning a lot. And then on top of it, my job on the weekend would be to wrestle. So when I took the wrestling element out of it, I realized that's like an extra 2000 or more calories a week. I'm not burning. And that's when I had to go back and refocus. And so now that's when I'm back to balancing it out, doing the weights, doing the cardio. I feel that diet is super important. I learned that actually from my dog I had that passed away in February. He was 20 years old and I really believe we were able to give him that long life because of diet. And that's when I started looking at my diet and what I'm putting in my body. And that's when like, that's why I try to be very open to people because they think, oh, you know, it's easy for Shelly or this. It's a freaking hard. And that's when I learned learned that everybody's different. What I learned about myself is I'm fine having to work hard in the gym to eat what I want because I want to eat pasta. I want to drink wine and I don't want to feel restrictive. And there's nothing wrong with any of that because that was a way that I lived before. But I realized as long as you're moving, as long as you're burning off calories and you're not eating crap, all, you're like I'm not saying that either. We have to be kind to our body. And it's almost like with my regiment now, what's different for how it was before, it was like, I almost fell into it, it was robotic. And I just had to stay lean, especially when I was on TV, you gotta stay lean. But nowadays, it's like, you know, I wanna live a long life, going back to my fear's death. So it's like, how am I gonna help that happen? I have to be better about what I do put in my body. I have to work out with weights, not because I'm trying to get that last bit of fat. It's more like my muscles need to be strong so it'll serve my body more. And so my whole mindset with my routine and everything is different. It's more almost spiritual, like reconnecting with yourself. And that's when I feel I could stay on task more versus, oh, I just don't wanna feel fat, blah, blah, blah. And that's when it becomes a total chore. Whereas when you look at it is I want to take care of my insides and my outside. So I live a good quality life that I feel is the best fitness routine because that that changes from person to person what that means. But if that core of what you're trying to do is just stay healthy inside and outside of your body, dude, that's what's up. And you just need to find that what works for you. I loved how you brought your dog into it because the fact that your dog was able to live 20 plus years it sounds our dog decker so my boyfriend and i have a dog we're always posting about him on social media so for those of you guys that are listening you probably have seen photos of him shelly i'm sure you have too he's a cute little yellow lab he's not that little actually he's like 80 pounds but we love to mix in both healthy dry food but we feed him a lot of his treats are actually like yogurt or carrots or cucumbers or like, well, I'll cook him spinach for dinner or sweet potato. So he does eat what I like to say fairly healthy, both the mix of healthy dog food and also human food. 
So I think it's awesome that you are kind of on a spiritual journey for yourself as far as wanting to have that longevity, wanting to uh, live a nice, long, healthy life. Because I actually asked my boyfriend that recently. We had a discussion and I was like, if you can live 100 plus years, but if you're not healthy, do you really want to live that 100 plus years? But if you could only live to be 70 or 80, but be completely pain free, completely mobile, completely just free to just live your life. I would rather live 75, 80 years versus 150 years if I'm in a wheelchair, but everybody thinks a certain way. So I think it's awesome how you are able to eat those healthy meals, get out there, work out, stay fit, work on your muscles. And it's not just about like you're saying, looking good being naked or looking good in that crop top or looking good in that swimsuit. It's more about like health, fitness, wellness, and spirituality of, okay, if I eat this proper food, my body's going to feel better. And if I work out a certain amount of times a week, I probably will live longer. So that's awesome. I'm so happy I asked you about those fitness tips. Sports, you mentioned that you ran track as a child. So who did you look up to as a kid? Were there any sports in particular that you really enjoyed watching or any athletes, whether it be Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant or any NFL players? You know, I'm a little different. And in saying how I'm different is like when I become like, because I get asked this question a lot, whether it be what was my favorite um, like sports figure growing up or a lot of times I get asked who was my favorite wrestler who's inspired me. And like, I really didn't have that. Like I didn't look at people like, let's say Michael Jordan or whatever. Cause here's the thing, I love sports, but I was never like, oh, that's my team. I know all the players. I've always loved about sports is the physical part. Cause I love to play them. I love playing sports, like whatever. I love to play it. Like when, I wasn't doing track and I was in high school. Like a lot of times, um, you know, when you have PE and like they kind of make it free. So a lot of the times the girls would just like walk the track and just gossip the whole time. But me, I took it serious and I was over there doing the drills or I wanted to play the different sports that they had, whether it was basketball, um, uh, the football or whatever. So I was always about playing sports and what mesmerized me was whether it was a basketball game, whether it was a Dodgers game, when I would go and see sports live, I loved how these players are all working together. Like to me, I just, it was always like that. Wow. They're working together. They're strategizing. Like, like it wasn't like there was like my, my personal MVP of players. It was just like being so fascinated that, a group of people come together to try to, if you think of it, kind of outwit mentally and physically their opponents. And that just was so cool to watch it happen. And then when I would watch it happen, especially these live games with the Dodgers, um, it's like I would sit there and I would feed off of how, and I understood what people were super into it, we knew all the, they did know all the players' names and they were like hardcore, like real fans, as I guess you would say. I would feel that energy because how I got lost and how they're coming together to try to win. And so that's that's kind of how I've always looked at sports and what it's meant to me. So I don't have like an answer of like who was like that one that stood out or whatever. It's just I just love sports. And I think that was the same thing with wrestling. It was like people are all coming together to make the show happen and then they're making it happen and they're making you believe. So some people would say, and I've been, people have given me crap and they call me, they say like, I'm not really a fan or poser about it. But I don't think that's true. It's just, I connected with sports in a different way. Sorry. (laughs) But you know what? Yours is an authentic answer because some people will would say the generic like, oh, I love Michael Jordan or oh, I love growing up watching Michael Vick or I really enjoyed Kobe Bryant. So I think yours is very authentic to you and your life. You enjoyed track and you said some people enjoyed 
walking around the track just to gossip and you actually took it seriously and you enjoyed watching sports because it gave you like a positive outlet in a way and correct me if I'm wrong but that's how I'm gauging your response and you also modeled so I want to talk about modeling so you are again absolutely stunning we already talked about what she's wearing today she's freaking tan as heck she has this really pretty blue flower in her hair she has nice long dark hair and she's wearing i believe like a really pretty blue outfit i don't know what it looks like because she's sitting down of course but it's like a royal blue top of some sort so we will discuss modeling and then stick with us guys because of course we're going to talk all about wrestling you are listening to my friend shelly martinez former wwe wrestler i know she obviously wrestled with other companies as well not just wwe we're going to be touching upon all that she actually got her start in wrestling while working on an independent film. So stick with us. We will talk all about her wrestling career. But before that, you guys are learning about her behind the scenes, growing up in California, workout routine, how she is super obsessed with wanting to live a long, healthy, happy life, working on traumas that she witnessed when she was younger in sports. It sounds like her being involved in sports was a positive outlet for her. And she also got into modeling. So girl, let's talk about it. You have an amazing jawline, very pretty cat eyes, dark hair. And the reason why I'm expressing what you look like is because if people have never seen your social media or have never watched you wrestle, and if they're just going to listen to this podcast, I want people to kind of visualize what you look like. All right. Well, being that I grew up here in SoCal, it was only a matter of time before I got into the modeling uh, life. When I was, I think, two years old, my mom put me in one of those like baby pageants. So I did that for a little bit. Um, I enjoyed it. I've always loved like makeup and cute clothes and very feminine things but then at the same time like i liked playing in the mud i love dinosaurs when i got let's see i guess it was right out of high school is when i started to really move forward with trying to be a model full-time and at that time um here in la there was kind of like a little underground scene going on that was really thriving then and it was like this whole pinup hot rod like rockabilly kind of vibes and i just loved it because i will always be part rockabilly at the end of the day in my soul so i just loved how like it made me feel beautiful um, i liked hanging out with the other girls and getting to know everyone so that's really where my like full force with my modeling really kicked into gear is just being a pinup model learning who betty page was and these different artists uh, my first tattoo I got is on my lower back and it's a Varga girl, which means there was this uh, artist back in the day, like in the forties called, um, and all his girls were called Varga girls because his name was Alberto Vargas. So like, that's how much I connected with that. And to this day, whenever I do pinup shoots, I can be feeling so bloated, ugly, not feeling it. But as soon as it's time to shoot, there's something about the pinup that like that vibe. And a friend of mine recently said it best. She was like, anyone can do pinup, anybody like that's what pinup is. So I'm really grateful that the world of modeling really opened up for me with that pinup vibes because it really put a different approach to what I wanted out of it. At the time there was gals um, like there's a model you may or may not know named Dita Von Tees. And at that time, like, I remember when she was working at the bikini bar, like, that was her deal. And now she's like this international burlesque phenomenon. <laughs> like, it's like everyone loves her. And it's during that time, that was when I saw her build herself. And she had a website. And that's when I knew right then and there, that's what I wanted for myself. Because I started to see these girls. Um, another uh, girl, Stacey Burke, she used to be a Playboy a playmate and uh, Hugh Hefner's ex. But she was hustling. And she had her StaceyBurke.com and LitaVonTees.com. And I started to get to mingle on these gigs with these girls who were having websites. And like that's before websites were what they are today. And what I saw in that was they were picking and choosing who they wanted to work with on their sites. They were making their money. They had full control over it. And by the time I discovered that that's what these girls were doing and they were making a living off of it, 
I had experienced the creepy photographers. I've ex had these weird things happen. So to me, it seemed really empowering that they were taking control in their hands and getting rid of those people so they don't have to deal with them. And, you know, it was amazing. So when I continued to do that, that's when the other more mainstream things started to pop on, you know, I did some catalog, especially before my tattoos, I would do a lot of work actually. And there were some photographers like, why'd you get tattooed? Cause back then they didn't like tattoos, but you know, it just kind of one gig after another word of mouth, like just really got me the really cool gigs. And it's so crazy because along that way, you know, I was in Lowrider magazine. And for me, that was really huge because again, growing up in my Chino era, that something was really embraced. And I always thought those girls were so beautiful. And there I been on the magazine a few times. And so when those times had happened, when I shot with them back in the day before wrestling entered my life, it was like, I felt beautiful. And I felt like, wow, I grew up to be one of those girls. And I'm really grateful for that because when I went into the wrestling world, a lot of people at that time, things have changed now. They kind of looked down on me and didn't take me serious because I was doing these modeling gigs. And I was even told uh, after I started training, you know, if you're really serious about wrestling, you have to choose. You can't be this model actress and a wrestler. So I chose wrestling and I really put my modeling career on the back burner for a really long time because I was focusing on my wrestling career. And so now fast forward to today, I'm retired and it's so cool because I'm doing exactly what I set out to do back then with having my websites that have my exclusive content. You know, I think it's great that things like OnlyFans and Patreon are giving gals out there a chance to be done with the negative of creating and taking control. And I've watched some women really rebuild their life. And it's so cool to have wanted that in the past, kind of been looked down upon because that was always in the back burner. And it's cool that now things have changed to where not only are People in general, you know, not even just girls, but people in general with their content, they're able to do what they want to do on their freaking terms. It's freaking amazing. So that's kind of like the short story of like my modeling career. It's just like that full circle. I'm doing exactly what I wanted to before wrestling entered, but just in a better way because technology is better now. I am obsessed with the fact that you mentioned how people through things like Patreon, podcasting, even OnlyFans, where you are able to almost cut out that middleman of potentially having an agent or having to work with a creepy photographer. You could just have your friend shoot photos of you because I kind of fell into that situation too when I was younger where there was always the creeps around. You didn't know who you could trust. You always had to bring like either a parent or a friend or somebody to like a casting call. Now we're at that point where we can be our own content creators and we're in charge of almost making our own money. And I have this talk all the time with family and friends where it's like a lot of the times people go to college. I have my college degree and even working for top companies, they don't want to pay you top dollar, but they want you to show up on time, look fabulous, do this, do that, go to all of these interviews and whatnot. And you're kind of like, okay, and then you're going to pay me like $75 per gig or $100 per gig. This is not like a livable wage. It's absolutely bizarre that a lot of women in sports and probably men in sports, aside from the pro athletes themselves, do not even have livable wages. And it's absolutely mind blowing to me. So I'm happy that we are sort of touching upon this topic that if you're able to content create and have the freedom to be not only creative and do it when you want to, but if you can be in charge of making your own money and not having that middleman, not having people tell you when to do it, how to do it, where to do it, and what your quote unquote salary is, this is like the best possible situation that people in our industry could be in. It's absolutely amazing. And I think it's so freaking awesome that you mentioned that you learned through watching some of your other friends, whether they were in Playboy or other magazines, you were like, you know what? These women can do it. I can freaking do it too. So I'll ask you this because I know you kind of jokingly said that you have been a 
Carl's Girl, were you ever in any of the commercials or advertisements or were you just jokingly saying that because you enjoyed the food? And then also, were you ever in Playboy? Did you ever attend in any of their events? I wish. <laughs> I wish. No, but I've been wanting to. I've been sitting on it. I need to do it. I want to read you how... Um, Paris Hilton did the whole like washing the car and it was like too hot for TV thing. I totally have to do that, but no, I'm just a Carl's girl because I enjoy their products. But, um, you know, shout out Carl's Jr. If you ever need a new Carl's girl, I'm here for you. Playboy. It's so interesting because I definitely have a different energy about them now than I did when I was younger. I, there was even a time where, I wanted to be one of the girlfriends. So I would go to the mansion. I would have, I go to the different little parties. I usually would go to the bigger ones. So it wasn't ever like, I never went to one of those like real intimate ones where it's like, you know, just a handful of people there. But um, it's crazy because I just really, Again, nobody get mad at me. This is just my opinion. I just used to really think Hugh Hefner was this like amazing man that helped empower women. And I just don't think that of him anymore. But I don't regret wanting to be in Playboy, be associated with Playboy. And I don't even regret saying, you know what? I want to live at the mansion. What do I have to do to be a girlfriend? I don't even regret that because all of that gave me all these different experiences. Like, whether or not I like Hugh Hefner or not, it's freaking awesome to go to the Playboy Mansion. It's beautiful. And it seems like you're in a dream. And, I mean, I'm, it's designed to be that way. You know, I just, I've never had a bad time at the Playboy Mansion. And I think for me, with the Playboy Mansion, like, from going from a girl with stars in her eyes to, especially after I was in WWE and uh, TNA wrestling, so I was on TV, so that opened up different doors to where I was invited to be around different people, whatever. My, after I got fired from WWE, my self-worth took a dive for a little bit. So for me, when I would get invited to go to these parties or I'd be around these women and other playmates or working shoots with them, um, it helped me because I was like, see, whatever, whatever WWE, see, look what I'm doing. I'm still going. And so it really helped me. I did a couple of like their internet stuff, nothing huge. I was one of their girls that they would come and have come down to uh, the Playboy radio station. And I would be like their bit girl like if they needed a sexy girl for some kind of bit uh, that would be me and i would be there so i did that a couple times which was really cool going back to i always loved broadcasting so that was like my favorite just to be able to go to the playboy radio station and be a part of that even though i was just part of a gag or a bit it was really cool like to see because that was so long ago and to see a real like recording studio and um you know see the like engineer and then the, how the mics are and then you walk in it was just so awesome it had just this vibe to it it was amazing and one of my favorite things to eat is sushi every time i've gone to the playboy mansion they always have so much good sushi so shout out to whoever does the sushi at the playboy mansion i used to be obsessed with that show the girls next door so when i would go there it's like i want to be friends with holly and Bridget. And uh, it's just so funny because later in life, I ended up being on a shoot with Bridget. And that was because we both were on the show called The Search for the Next Elvira. And that to me was so cool that like I got to for a few days be around Bridget and to see if she really her vibe was like how it was on Girls Next Door. And it totally was. I was like, dude, I love Bridget. <laughs> so um yeah, that's that's my affiliation with Playboy. And it's funny because I've been needing some extra motivation lately when I do my cardio. And I've been revisiting watching the old girls next door. So it's such a trip to like go back and revisit it. Uh, it's so crazy. Did you ever watch that show? Yes. So I, again, I'm thrilled that I asked you that question because I recently listened, not only did I read Holly Madison's book, but I actually listened to an interview with her 
from a podcast that I listen to. It's a very popular podcast. Uh, it's called Call Her Daddy. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the podcast host of that is actually from the East Coast, which is where I'm from. She also went to Boston College or Boston University, played soccer there, and I'm actually from the Boston area. So anyways, I've kind of known about that podcast for a while, but she recently interviewed Holly Madison. So as you're talking about, when I was younger, Playboy was like the thing. Like if you didn't want to pose in it, you wanted to go there, you wanted to go to a party. Shelly, one time I remember like going through a bad breakup and I was, I ran to freaking CVS, stupid me, ran to CVS, got a freaking box of bleach thinking I could bleach my hair to look like a Playboy model. It's probably the stupidest thing I could have done, girl, because my hair turned out like this nasty orange color. But I was just like so enthralled and encaptured by wanting to be like one of these girls. I was like, I want to go to these parties. I want to do this. I want to do that. It's like you're, when you're younger, you're so like impressionable. And when you watch things, you just want to be like that. And I was young. I was probably freaking like a freshman in high school when that TV show came out because I'm still fairly young. I'm only in my early thirties. And yes, I did watch that show. I do know who Kendra is and Bridget and Holly. And I was like obsessed with Hugh Hefner back in the day. But after like I feel like when he passed away, all of the bad jujus and bad demons about him started to leak out. And it's like that whole vibe, it was almost like a facade because you have this nice house. You think you're being taken care of. But if you get to meet, I've never met any of these girls, but you said you got to meet Bridget. But it's almost like that world was very toxic. He, again, I'm, this is, I've never met Hugh. I've never met any of these women, but I'm basing this off of interviews and the books and stuff that I've listened to and read. But it sounds like that whole situation was very freaking toxic. He used to force girls to hook up with him and he used to make girls take drugs and like make them get plastic surgery and do this and do that. And just, it almost sounds like, mold them into Stepford wives. And it's just absolutely bizarre to me that he did that to women. And for so long, people like you and I were brainwashed into thinking that was cool. And now we're like, woke it up to the whole fact of, wow, that's like so freaking toxic. So I'm glad we're bringing this up again. I've never been to the Playboy Mansion. I've never met any of these people before. This is based off of stuff that I've read and to listen to from one of the top girlfriends, Holly Madison. So Shelly, I, I applaud you for bringing that up. 